everyone my name is Madison welcome back to my channel if you've never seen my face before welcome today's video might be a little bit interesting today we're gonna to be talking about what I learned from over 200 internship application rejections I'm going to my junior year of college as an aerospace engineering student um, I'm also minoring in computer science if that is of any interest to you um, and last year I applied for over 200 internships for the 2021 summer. Now, as you can probably imagine, I did not get any of them. I had four or five um, interviews, but never actually followed through, was never given a job offer. And I think I have hopefully figured out what it takes. Well, maybe not what it takes, but what I can do this year um, to kind of better myself and prepare myself even more just because internship applications are right around the corner. So Without further ado, let's just get started Like I said, I am studying aerospace engineering, which means I was primarily applying to companies like Lockheed Martin Ball Aerospace, Sierra Nevada Corporation um, a few SpaceX, Tesla Those sorts of things. I mostly tried to hit the big boy companies um, apply to a few smaller local ones, but the thing about those they might not be as well known just because they are a little bit smaller which means That might be a good thing because there might be less people applying But at the same time they can be a lot more picky because they're probably looking for one Maybe two or three interns if they're a company of like 25 30 people, which I definitely applied to a few of those um, regardless Going into this year, I have so much advice, so many things I'm going to try to work on myself, and so many things I would suggest you to do as well. That being said, I definitely did have a few friends who did get internships this year, um, but the majority of my friends tried and failed like myself. Granted, I am working at my research lab, so I guess I kind of still had something. So I do feel like I learned quite a bit from all of my internship and interview applications and rejections before applying and interviewing and getting my job at my research lab. That being said, enough rambling, let's just get started. The first thing that I learned, and this might be a little bit obvious, but your resume is never good enough. I put so much effort and energy into my resume last year and even now I look back at it and I hate it. Um, seriously, your resume is never good enough. Ask everybody you know for advice, their input, things like that because so many people are gonna be looking at your resume and first impressions matter so much. Whether it comes down to like spacing, colors, fonts, overall appeal, things like that. If you're not being descriptive enough and not showing enough purpose with um, maybe what you do at your job in your club something like that your resume matters so much and it is never good enough The biggest thing I learned is that I need to take advantage of the resources I have to improve my resume even more for example CU gives us um, This program called VMOC which allows you to upload your resume get instant feedback You get scored from 0 to 100 and then three separate categories on things like overall style and presentation and then it goes into like word use overusing word words ooh, overusing words word choice things like that and so much more i've never used this and i really wish i would have last year but i literally just found out about it but google your stuff google what programs your university offers and things like that just because it can be so helpful CU also has a career services group that I did not take advantage of as much as I should have where you can do practice interviews, get advice, people can go through your resume, things like that. Take advantage of that. That is why that is there. You're paying tuition. You're probably paying some stupid fee for that. So take advantage. Number two, go to job and career fairs. I went to one um, and it was the most useful two hours I've had in a while. Honestly, um, I went to an aerospace related job and career fair You could sign up to go to certain one-on-ones. You could have 15 minutes to talk with somebody about their company um, You could go to just like big group meetings where they would talk about what they do give a presentation at the end You could do a Q&A the thing about this and why this is so important is a it's important to of course Learn about companies what interests you with that company what it would look like if you were to actually go work there and see if that actually fits with you. But number two, these connections are so, so, so valuable. 
like I said, I went to the one career fair, I talked to a few people, and at the end of my, one of my one-on-ones, this lady actually gave me her email. Now, this lady and I have been friends, we've been talking for almost a year now, we'll meet up for like Zoom coffee, obviously like with COVID we never met in person, but every month or so we'd meet up on Zoom, talk for three or four hours on a Saturday, she'd go through things like my resume, give me internship or like interview advice, um, talk about careers when I was applying for my research lab job she gave me advice and helped me out these connections are so valuable and that is what is going to get you into that company three and four kind of go off of that and that is to make connections and take advantage of them whether that's getting to know a professor better um, reaching out to someone on LinkedIn these career fairs maybe it's your dad's friends something or other that works at a company you want to work at it's never rude to just say hi, just start a conversation. If you have their LinkedIn, if you see them in person, if you know their email, just reach out. What's the worst that can happen? They don't respond. I don't know. Best case scenario though, is that you develop this friendship, develop this bond, develop this connection, and they could be the person that gets you into this company, that writes you a letter of recommendation. Um, something like that. I definitely did not take advantage of my connections as much as I should have um, and I definitely did not make as many connections as I wish I would have. A friend of mine or I guess a classmate of mine actually um, I talked to him at the end of the school year and he got two job offers for the summer, two internship offers, which is like unheard of between junior and senior year, especially where we live just because it is such a competitive market. And the thing that he said is that both of his um, job offers were from companies that he went to the career fair with and that he met someone at. He met someone, made a connection, got his name out there, got an interview and got an offer because, like I said, he made a good impression, he's a nice, friendly, personable guy, he's really smart, really hardworking, and now he gets two job offers because he's taking advantage of his opportunities and his resources and the people around him. Number five, I have cover letters question mark. Um, <laughs> I have heard mixed things about cover letters, but the way I think about it is that it can never hurt. I definitely did not do or make or send as many cover letters as I wish I would have. But um, again, like I said, I really don't think it could hurt. The worst thing that happens is that they just don't read your cover letter. Um, if you don't know what a cover letter is, you typically send it in with your resume, explaining a little bit about yourself, your qualifications, and why you feel you are a good fit for the job. I feel like I'm horrible at writing cover letters and I think a lot of people agree because you literally are for a page bragging on yourself which is really uncomfortable sometimes. You want to come across like personable and humble and down to earth and like you don't think you're like the coolest person in the world but at the same time you're trying to convince them that you are the most qualified person for this job, that you're going to get the most out of this job and that they should hire you. It's a really fine line, really hard balance to hit and I do not feel like I'm there. I feel like I definitely said it in cover letters where I am almost cutting myself down because I'm trying not to be cocky and bragging and things like that where I acknowledge I don't have a 4.0 and I acknowledge that I've only been in a research lab for eight months. But at the same time, you need to highlight your qualifications so I've definitely sent in cover letters where I feel almost repulsed by how cocky I sound um, and maybe not even cocky just like I know how to do this and that and I'm really good at this and I've done this for four years and it, I kid you not it's a page of you bragging on yourself and explaining why you're so good at something and it's really hard to do. Um, I've sent in a few cover letters I've especially of course if they require it do it um, and especially these smaller companies, I would highly recommend them just because, like I said, they are probably going to be getting less applications. Um, and in a smaller company, at least from what I've heard, you're working, of course, in a smaller group than you would a larger company. So they want to make sure you'll work well together, even more so. Um, cover letters are really important, I think, especially, like I said, if they're required. I really don't think they will hurt. And 
if I could give you a piece of advice, do one for every single application you do because the more you do, the better you'll get. Um, and like I said, even if it's not required, there's no harm in trying, no harm in sending it. And if anything, you're just gonna learn from it. Mm. Next up, I have be involved. This might be obvious, but you need to do more than just go to class and go to parties. Um, if you really are trying to get an internship, either in like a competitive field, at a competitive age where like maybe you're freshman or sophomore, it's a lot more competitive then, and it's a lot harder to get an internship when you're younger, um, as opposed to junior, senior year, just because you don't have the qualifications typically as far as classes go, you um, maybe aren't as knowledgeable, don't have as much lab work experience, things like that. So the best way to supplement that is to be involved. Join a club, join 10 clubs, um, something. This of course allows you to build your resume, whether you're learning SOLIDWORKS or ANSYS or something like that. You can learn a lot of really good hard skills with that. It of course can help you make friends, make connections. Maybe your um, club leader or something like that as a professor that worked at somewhere really cool or something like that. I've had friends in clubs tell me they met people who work at Tesla and interviewed them and now are really good friends with them. Those connections will help you out so, so, so much. And being involved can also show that you're a team player. Um, and if you do get a leadership role, of course, that looks amazing. You also need to show that you're proactive. I definitely don't think I've done this enough and I still, struggle with that a little bit. Um, I definitely feel like I'm proactive, but I remember this one time in one of my interviews last year, somebody asked me, give me an example of a time you were proactive. And I gave an example from high school, which in hindsight could have been a lot worse, but at the same time, I probably should have done something more recent, more relevant to show that I'm actually proactive now. And the thing about this is you wanna answer this question in your resume and in your cover letter. You don't want somebody to just have to ask you that. They want to see that you are taking an initiative, you're wanting to be the leader, you're wanting to be involved, um, and that you're stepping up when something goes wrong or somebody needs a helping hand, something like that. And while I do tend to be the leader in the code, stuff like that, like I definitely feel like I'm heavily involved in a lot of labs and things like that, and I do feel like I'm proactive, you wanna show that. Again, whether that's your resumes, um, your cover letter, if you make a portfolio, just do something to kind of hit all the boxes. Leader, teamwork, proactive, you have initiative, um, things like that. And then last but not least, I really think it's important to show that you are truly interested in this stuff. Um, this kind of goes back to being involved, but I've had a lot of friends who, they might have really good grades, but they aren't in clubs, they don't have research, they don't have a job, um, they aren't doing any personal projects, anything like that. And while it's great that you have good grades and you're studying this, the recruiter wants to see that you're actually interested in what you're trying to do and what you're studying. And that comes down to, again, things like clubs, working in a research lab, maybe you built a drone last summer just for fun, um, or people will build submarines and robotic cars, things like that. Maybe you race drones. Again, just show that you're interested in this beyond the classroom um, because they wanna hire somebody that's actually gonna be excited about their work. And t maybe take this with a grain of salt because of course I was not there and I've kind of just heard this from um, some of my supervisors at work. But I was really excited to hear that one of the reasons I was hired for my research lab is because they could tell I was genuinely excited about what they were doing, which meant a lot to me. Because I am, and I, of course I wanna show that I'm actually interested in aerospace. I'm really interested in aviation and aer aeronautics, and I was really excited to be a part of their group. You want to show that, not only in your interview, because you might not have an interview, but you wanna show that, again, in your resume, your portfolio, your cover letter, things like that. Show true interest, show some excitement, and show that you're willing to go the extra mile beyond the classroom. Because if your resume is limited to your classroom experience, there's no way for them to know, and again, truly understand, that this passion extends beyond the classroom. 
You might just be really good at school, really good at labs, really like learning, but if it doesn't go beyond that, what is there? Again, they want to make sure you're actually excited about what they're doing. So you're not a dud, you're not boring, you're not a downer in the workplace. They want you to be excited about it. There's that. <laughs> I'm sorry for that ramble. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I cannot believe how many internship applications I sent in and did not have success with last year and how much time I spent on that. And while I think it's inevitable, I hear stories all the time of people sending in two, three, hundred applications and not getting any response. There's a lot to learn from it. I think there's a lot of science and it's honestly an art that goes into getting these internships. And I wish I had known all of this last year when I wasn't literally like mass applying to these internships. Um, where I would try to sit down and do five in an hour. You need to take your time, truly put in some effort, um, and it will pay off. So thank you all again for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Good luck with your internship applications this year if you're applying. If not, good luck with classes um, and everything like that. But I will see you all next time. Peace out. Bye.